Welcome into Chicago Bears now on the call-in app. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. We're going to take all of your calls here in just a moment, address the latest Bears news and rumors as well. So we'll start taking some calls here shortly. We'll go ahead and start with Nicholas. Nicholas, welcome in. Uh, unmute yourself in the bottom right uh, of your screen and uh, welcome in. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, Harrison? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Um, so I want to get on here. I want to ask you about something that you keep mentioning, right? Um, so you keep talking about how Justin Fields is going to have a pretty good year this year. And I wanted to give my take on it. And I wanted you to essentially, like, I don't know, give me your two cents about it, right? Okay. Um, I have kind of a big issue with our wide receiving core. Um, I actually consider it to be one of the weakest in the NFL right now. Just when you consider the fact that um, – here, let's take a look here. Uh, if Darnell Mooney were to get hurt, we really don't have any other weapons. I mean, you can say St. Brown, but he's not proven. Uh, Byron Pringle, I mean, he he's not really proven any. He's been injured a lot. So, I mean, I want your thoughts on that. And then additionally, when you look at the O-line, except for, except for Whitehair and Patrick, we really, really don't have, like, proven, proven people that there. It's, it's pretty weak, and it, it's, it's kind of a big issue to me that they didn't do more to uh to help yeah. fields this offseason i mean and then when you think about i mean i guess when you talk about his development just like you say he can he can uh you know improve this year without the correct weapons around him he can actually do worse than he did last year in, in my opinion we can actually ruin him which is a pretty big deal considering we moved up to the, uh in the draft to get him we gave up our first round pick this year yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so I mean, for me as a Bears fan, man, if we don't do anything next year to help him at all, it, it's just going to be a huge issue for me. And I think I think I share a lot of the uh, the same concerns that a lot of Bears fans have. I mean, we 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 did. I, I don't hate the picks this year because I mean they're 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 starters, so I mean it's it's not that big of an issue. But when you think about Valus, I mean they're talking they're he, he's I, I don't know I don't know about him. I I'd have to see him this year. Yeah, but let, I wanted your thoughts on let, that. Yeah, let me jump in. And I think you make a lot of points and and I've hit on a lot of those. I've consistently said that this team should go out and get at least another receiver and at least another offensive lineman. I think you should either go get a proven left tackle like an Eric Fisher, like a Dwayne Brown, or a right guard uh, as well. I'd, I'd feel a lot better if you filled one of those positions with a vet. On the flip side, I still think Fields can improve and should play better for a couple of reasons this year than he did last year. Number one, I think the staff – had lost complete confidence and just had no idea what they were doing last year. And that really started with the second they drafted Justin Fields by blindly sticking by Andy Dalton as the starter and giving Fields zero first-team reps all offseason long. That was mistake number one. Uh, number mm -hmm. two, I think this system, they will play to his strengths. Now, yes, yeah, he needs playmakers around him. They might be projecting too much with guys like Byron Pringle. I think Pringle's a good number three. He's their number two right now, so that might be a little bit of a reach. Clearly, they think Bayless Jones is going to be a weapon. They feel like uh, he's going to be an impact player right away. We'll see how big of a playmaker he'll be, but I do tend to agree that I wish they had more. What I would also say is it's May 11th. I think you can still add players. There's still guys out there. Um, now, <laughs> Am I – do I get impatient sometimes like all you? Like, why not just go sign somebody then? Yeah, sure, of course. But I think Ryan Poles is saying, look, we're about to have $60 million in dead cap. I'm not going to force the issue when I feel like this is a multi-year deal. Now, if we're sitting here next off season and the receiving core is Darnell Mooney and Byron Pringle still, it's like, okay, unless Pringle just had a – thousand yard season this year something unforeseen that's a bit of a problem you need to upgrade there but um i think we have to be patient i think we have to trust that this coaching staff alone will help justin fields while also recognizing yeah add another lineman add another receiver that would certainly help things out i think you've made some good points uh but i don't think i i'll put it this way i would be shocked if fields was worse this year only because He's going to have so many reps, and knowing he's the starter this entire offseason, those things alone should help him play better this year uh, than how he played last year, which obviously was very up and down, to you know put it lightly. Uh, at times, it was uh, hard to watch. So that's what I would counter with. Um, but, yeah, I think your points are valid. There's no doubt. Do, do you think – I'm sorry for interrupting you. Do, do you think that, that this offseason we should have at least – knowing going to the draft knowing – 
that we were taking two defensive people right off the bat, do you think we should have addressed at least either the line or the wide receiving core, you know, just at, at least? Or, or what are your thoughts I, on that? I mean, I think they feel like the addition of Pringle is bigger than what we feel like it is. We'll see how that plays out. Pringle had a decent year last year, kind of buried on the Chiefs wide receiver depth chart. Uh, I'm curious to see if they have real plans for St. Brown. I'm skeptical there personally. Um, so am I. I do think that the Larry Ogunjobi deal kind of set them back. Ryan Poles admitted that that, con- that verbal contract – prevented them from signing other players. They brought him in. He failed the physical. Guys mm-hmm. that they were interested had already signed. So maybe that impacted things as well. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to say. Um, but there's still good players available. I don't think, you know, this Bears roster ne- is necessarily finalized. Um, I Look, if you go into week one with what you currently have on the line and at receiver, I'll be more concerned than I am now. But that's four months away. So we'll see what happens between now and then. All right, for sure. Thanks. Uh, appreciate, thanks. The, uh, appreciate the Harrison. call, Nicholas. Uh, we'll go to the next caller here. Uh, we've got uh, Colin on the Colin app. Colin, welcome in. Hit that unmute button in the bottom right hand of your screen. Should be the little microphone button. And uh, let's talk some bears. Hey, Harrison. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about a player on the Bears offense who I think is kind of overlooked in Cole Komet. He kind of had an underrated season last year, at least in my opinion. He had almost 600 receiving yards, which is one of the better tight end seasons that the Bears have had in recent memory. Um, With really the only big flaw being his lack of touchdowns, I I don't think he had a single one last year. Do you think this year with a new coaching staff, he'll have a bigger uh, impact in the red zone? I, I think he's going to have a bigger season. And even last year, to your point, 60 catches actually did have 612 yards. The lack of touchdowns is what stood out. But I'll put some of that on the scheme. I think they tried to force feed Jimmy Graham once they got into the red zone sometimes because they stupidly kept him when they should have cut him last year. Um, so I think they felt like they needed to try and use him, and that was a mistake. I think Cole Komet, if he gives you similar catches and yards but just has five touchdowns, like if Cole Komet had 60 catches, 612 yards, which is what he had last year, and four touchdowns, I think we'd be a lot more excited about him than fans are, right? Like it's just the lack of touchdowns would be like, oh, well, he's not really, you know, making that leap. Well, he doubled his catches. He more than doubled his yardage in year two, and that was still playing in a garbage system where three quarterbacks started last year. I think Cole Komet has a real chance to be a top 15 tight end this year. I mean, he he played fairly well last year. Now he's got to find the end zone, but keep in mind too that he had to chip block a decent amount last year because the offensive line wasn't good. Now, you could say that he may have to do some of that this year if they don't add a couple more pieces, but I think, Colin, you make a good point that Cole Komet – is probably someone we're not talking about enough and, quite frankly, someone that I don't think I've talked about enough. So I'm glad you brought that uh, to the table here today. Yeah, uh, I just think, you know, it's a very important part with how weak the receiver core is that I think tight ends like him and Ryan Griffin and others are going to have to fill in yeah. just because there's no other receiving targets. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Colin, appreciate the question. Uh, before we get to the next caller, what do you guys think? How many touchdowns for Cole Komet? here in his third NFL season. I'll set the over-under at three and a half. Two in his rookie year, zero last year. Can he give us four? Uh, We'll see what happens on that front. Get your votes in down in the comments. All right, let's go to DeBears fan. He's next up here on our Bears call-in Q&A. DeBears fan, welcome in. Unmute yourself in the bottom hand, uh, right-hand side of your screen. I hear you. There you go. What's up? What's up, boss? Can you hear me okay? I got you. You're good. All right, man. So uh, first off, I just want to reiterate a point real quick and kind of get your thoughts. I was on the live stream yesterday. I'm the prodigy on YouTube, man. Oh, what's, up? Um, what's going on, bro? So this is a point that I want to make and I kind of want everybody to listen because the more I'm looking into this, man, the more similarities that I'm seeing. Um, so I made the point yesterday about the Bills and their timeline and what happened to them and what's been going on. And the more I look into it, man, the more it just looks like that's where we're going. So in 2017, they got a cornerback in Tredavious White at the 27th pick. They hired Sean McDermott, a defensive head coach, got Brian Dayball, and he wasn't really proven at that point. But they had a couple of key pieces. 
the next year when they went ahead and got Josh Allen, they started to formulate an offense. Now I started looking at some tape. And their offense was nowhere near the same system that it was in 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. It was flawed. They got Josh Allen, and their receivers were John Brown, Cole Beasley, and some other no-name. So they didn't have any big-time people, and Josh Allen struggled. What they did is they started to build that offense around him, what worked, what didn't, started to kind of tweak it, get some young, fast players. They eventually got Gabriel Davis and, and Dawson Knox and got some players that can fit into that system. Yep. Once the defense was set, McDermott is running a 4-3, hello, a 4-3 cover two defense. Once that was all set, Josh Allen showed exactly what he can and can't do. They went and got Stephon Diggs, plugged him in, plugged some other pieces in, and now they're one of the top teams, perennial top teams in the AFC. So I'm looking at the Bears. The only difference that I see is that we took Justin Fields first and then the coach and starting to kind of work it through. But I have full confidence in in uh in what Ryan Poles is doing. That first caller said, "Hey, we need more weapons. We need more guys." There's no point in paying a receiver 10, 15 million, 20 yeah, million dollars if he's going to come in here and do absolutely nothing like Allen Robinson did. First build something and then Poles is going to look around next year or the year after and start bringing in players that are going to start working for Justin Fields. So the only thing I want to ask you is do you think he's going to tar- start taking big swings next year? Because Luke Getze, let's be honest, he doesn't have that much play call and experience. We don't know what he's going to be. Yep. But do you think they should start taking swings next year? Or do you think this year is going to be more of a, a a scratch and sniff kind of year to where it's like, okay, this is what we can do, can't do. We need these kind of players, cut these players. And the next year start molding that offensive line the same exact way the Bills did. Their offensive line was trash. Yeah. Well, it was trash. And they started to build around that, and now they're one of the top teams. I'm fully confident that's where Poles is going. I kind of wanted your more more of a, a, a deep dive into what you think about that, man. I want everybody else to go look at the Bills from 2017 to 19 and tell me that's not exactly where we are. Well, first of all, uh, the Bears fair, uh, the prodigy on uh, our YouTube channel, by the way. appreciate you tuning in. This is the beauty of Colin, first of all. This is why I'm glad we've partnered with the Colin app because we can get these deep conversations with you guys. I want to hear from you. You guys, uh, hope ideally, want to hear from me. We can talk back and forth. Please hit that subscribe button here on Colin. That way we can continue to grow. Let's get across 200 uh, followers. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube later, chatsports.com slash Bears Colin to go subscribe uh, to our Colin channel. Um But to address all that, I think there are the parallels. The key, obviously, is can Justin Fields evolve and be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL? That kind of makes it all work, right? If he can't, none of it else really matters at the end of the day. This team will shine or fail with Justin Fields. That's what it comes down to. So this year, can he be a top 20 quarterback in the NFL? Can he ascend to that level? I I look back at Josh Allen's second year, and he took a leap, but not that big big massive leap that he took in the third year I think next year when you put bigger pieces around him like Stephon Diggs did uh, for the Bills a couple years ago that's when Allen really made that leap so can Fields become you know a guy where heading into year three you're like okay he's our starter then we're hoping for the big leap this year it's about improvement better decision making fixing the mechanical stuff that he's been working on with Getze now I've made the parallel and I'd be curious the Bears fan if you're still on if you want to hop back on in a second I think this team this year could be like the Eagles last year where they start a little slow. It's a little clunky. The roster isn't super deep yet. They're probably a year away. But the second half of the year, Fields plays better, like Jalen Hurts. He gets comfortable with the system. And, uh, you know, the coaching really starts to take place. And the defense does a good enough job to keep this team in games like Philadelphia's did last year. You scrape out eight or nine wins, sneak in, and then in 2023, you're trying to make a run like Philly is this year. They go get A.J. Brown. Uh, they go They go sign Hassan Reddick. I think that next year is a uh, time to make a big swing, especially if you can have one of these eight or nine win type of seasons this year and get some of that growth from Justin Fields. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand and I get where you're coming from, but I, I'm I'm still I'm still sticking to the Bills, man. I, I get the points you're making, but Josh Allen was more of a big arm and run first. And that's kind of what Justin yeah. Fields medium to short accuracy wasn't that great, but that deep ball was fantastic. Yeah. And they started to work on his mechanics, started to, again, started to figure out what he can and can't do and what he shouldn't do. And the coaching with McDermott and uh, Dayball really helped mold him. 
this year, like everybody's saying, a shout out to Jay Will and uh, Max Kellerman and them because they talk about the Bears a lot. This year is his rookie year. This is when he's the leader of the team, leader of the offense, yeah. and has actual say in what they can and can't do. I think that this year I'm expecting the same small little step up, but not a massive leap. I'm expecting him to work on those mechanics, work with the receivers a lot more, and I'm expecting him to get rid of Quinn and some other pieces and get some more draft picks next year and yeah. get a younger team and then take off completely. So I, I'm I'm not looking at next year as more of maybe a six or seven win. The year after that, I'm expecting 10-plus wins, man. Yeah. If it's going the way I think it's going to go and hope it's going to go, I mean, I don't see why we can't be the Bills at the NFC, man, yeah. especially with his talent in our leadership. I think the so, parallels are real. Yeah. I appreciate it, uh, DeBears fan. Uh, you are awesome. Uh, you guys in the comment section, let us know uh, how many wins for the Bears in 2022. Uh, how many wins do you think they'll win, uh, have this year?